All right, guys, let's go ahead and talk about our next two quadrilaterals that we're going to discuss. These are going to be the rhombus and the square. With your rhombus, just so you know, kind of a heads up, if you ever hear anybody say rhombi, that is plural for rhombus, okay? Uh, the properties that we're going to have here are going to be all five properties of a parallelogram. So just like the rectangle, they're going to have the properties of these parallelograms, opposite sides congruent, opposite sides parallel, opposite angles congruent, the diagonals will bisect each other, and consecutive angles will be supplementary. Now, when we look at the flow chart, you're going to see they do, that the, the rhombus does not have the, the two extra properties of the rectangle. There are no 90 degree angles, okay, and the diagonals are not perpendicular. Instead, we go a different direction. Again, we'll see, I'll go ahead and show that flow chart here. So, we're not underneath the rectangle with the rhombus, so it does not share these properties, these two properties here. We're going to take that parallelogram and we're going to go key off to a different direction here, right? So the new properties that we need to know for the rhombus, the three new properties, is we are going to have now, unlike the rectangle, we're going to have four congruent sides. So a rhombus is like a squished square, okay? So here our first rhombus, all we need to do is just put a tick mark on all four of these and there we have a rhombus. You see this picture? we know it's a rhombus. The next one is going to be that your diagonals are perpendicular, okay? So here on the second one, we're going to go ahead and draw in our diagonals. It's not a perfect rhombus, but this is supposed to be a 90 degree angle. Now what happens when you have this 90 degree angle, and you will see this with rhombus problems, we have not just a triangle, but we have a right triangle. So because they are perpendicular, we form four congruent right triangles. Oh, not angles. Sorry. Wrong shape. There we go. So our third one is going to be dealing with our, again, with our diagonals. But now the diagonals are not only going to bisect each other, because that's a property of a parallelogram, but they're going to bisect the opposite angles. So now we draw these guys in here. Let's go ahead and put our number three. What happens on all four of these angles, we're they're going to be bisected. Remembering, property of a parallelogram is opposite angles are congruent. So the bottom left and the top right are congruent. So whenever it bisects each of these, it forms four congruent angles. And same thing with the other diagonal, but we need to put the two arcs in it. So all four of these little angles will be congruent. Okay, so this is another property of the rhombus. So let's go ahead and take a look at our first problem. We have a rhombus, A, B, C, D. We have the measurement of angle B, A, C. Right here is 32 degrees they gave us. We want to find the measurement of all four of these angles. So starting off with uh, we're going to go ahead and start off with angle 4 here, actually, okay? because this is how we're going to find angle 1. We need to remember here that angle 4, our diagonals are perpendicular. So since they are perpendicular, perpendicular, we need to remember, we can even write it up here if we want to, we've got 90 degrees. Okay, It's going to form a 90 degree angle. So we have a right angle. So down here, we can go ahead and fill in 90 degrees. So with number one, we need to find angle number one. What we're going to do is not use any of these properties other than the fact that, you know, we've got this right angle here, but we're going to see what we talked about with that right triangle. And we've got two of the three angles. We have 32 degrees here. We have 90 degrees here. We're missing one angle, so we are going to use our triangle sum theorem. So for angle one, we're going to use the triangle sum theorem. Add the two that we have, 32 plus 90. And then we're going to take that sum of 122. We're going to subtract it from the total 180. And we will find that we're going to come out to angle one is 58 degrees. Next for angle two. When we find angle two over here, we're going to use one of our properties 
up here, we were told that the, uh, the diagonals bisect the opposite angles. So your diagonals will bisect angles, meaning this angle, angle A, B, C, has been cut in half, so angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. So here we'll kind of put in an explanation with angle 2. The diags bisect the angles. So that means the measurement of angle 1 is equal to the measurement of angle 2. And measurement angle 1 was 58 degrees, so angle 2 is 58 degrees. Angle 3, last one here. Angle 3 is going to be over here. Now, what's going to happen here is we're going to kind of discuss this parallel sides and that transversal that we did in the very, very first video that got kind of messy. But we need to see here that angle 3 right here, if we have our parallel sides, A, B, and C, D, okay, right here, we have this transversal right here. That diagonal is going to create alternate interior angles right here, okay? So this is the easiest way to look at this is when you see the diagonal and you see little angles on one on opposite angle, like over here and up here, they're on opposite sides of the diagonal and they're, op they're opposite angles. They're going to be alternate interior angles with these parallelograms. Okay, so anytime you see something like this, we're going to go to the opposite angle and the opposite side of the diagonal. They're alternate interior angles. It's easier to kind of look at it that way rather than have to draw all the lines out like I did on the other video. So here we have that opposite sides are parallel. There's your parallel. Therefore, we have alternate interior angles. So angle 3 will be congruent with angle BAC, which was 32 degrees. Example number 2. We see here that AE, so from A to E right here, is going to be 8. We want to find... Sorry, I'm on the wrong one over here. I'll erase that in a minute. Right here, 8. So we want to find AC. AC is the entire thing. So we need to remember that our property here, we're only looking at AE. We need to remember our parallelogram property that the diagonals are bisected. Okay, so that means AE, the length of AE, is going to be equal to the length of EC. These are going to be congruent. So their measurements are going to be equal. Okay? So that means over here this will also be 8. But again, we're looking for the entire thing. So if we want AC, all we have to do is add both of these together or double it. So we have AE plus EC. So AC will be 16. Okay, so get ready because we're about to get some algebra in here and uh, you will be solving um, on your own and we can do that thing where I'm going to pause it and then all of a sudden your answer is going to pop up. So you're going to need to pause it as well and I will give you that heads up. On the next one, we are looking at that AE. So from A to E right here is 3X plus 1. We're told that AC, the entire thing, the entire diagonal is 16. So we need to remember again, we're looking at, this is basically exactly what we just did on number two, but we have algebra now. That's the only difference between these two. We were given AE, we wanted AC. So we're going to do the exact same thing, and we're going to play a part plus part equals whole. So here we have the property is our diags are bisected. And we're going to do a part plus part equals whole, our segment addition postulate. So because AE and EC are congruent, that means that EC is also 3X plus 1. I know there's definitely one on the rectangle assignment that was like this as well. So we're going to add these two together and equal it to that 16. So we're going to have our part 3X plus 1 plus our other part 3X plus 1 all equal to 16. This is where I'm going to pause the video, 
put your finger on the pause, pause it, work this out, combine your like terms, etc., and then press resume so that you can see the answer is going to pop up all of a sudden. So if you're waiting for the answer, I don't have it yet because I realized that um, I did accidentally put 3x plus 1, so that was the change you see now, um, instead of 3x minus 1. Because when I got my answer, I was like, that's not right. So um, I apologize if you did work it all out. At least you got more practice. Um, you would have gotten a decimal. Let's go ahead and erase it. Let's go ahead and rewrite it with a 3x minus 1 plus 3x minus 1, and then solve it. So I'm going to go ahead and pause it now again. And this time, I promise, the answer is going to pop up. All right, and here is your work and your answer. You should have gotten three now that I did it correctly. All right, let's take a look at number four. Number four, we're going to go back to our, um, well, let's take a look real quick. Um, we're looking at the measurement of angle A, B, D. So A, B, D, this angle right here, is going to be 60 degrees. Okay, this angle right here. We want to find the measurement of angle B, D, C. So from B to D to C. And a second ago on um, a previous problem, I was telling you guys that on uh, number one, when we see these two angles where the angles are ones on one side of the diagonal, ones on the other side, and they're on opposite angles. This is going to deal with alternate interior angles. So because our opposite sides are parallel, okay, if you don't know that's parallel, then write parallel, please, okay? But because these opposite sides are parallel, these angles are congruent because we have alternate interior angles. So we say opposite sides are parallel, therefore we have alternate interior angles, and that's giving us 60 degrees. Last one on the rhombus. We have the measurements of angle C to D to B right here is 6Y. The measurement angle A, C, B, this angle over here, is 2y plus 10. We want to find y. So let's figure out what the heck we are going to do. Well, first of all, we need to, we can, we remember here that um, we're going to, we're going to deal with the triangle here, okay? We have 90 degree angle here because the diags, oops, diags are perpendicular, okay? And then we also can tell here that these two angles right here, B, C, E, and D, C, E, are going to be congruent because the diagonals are also, they also bisect the angles. So now to find this, we will use our triangle sum theorem. So we're going to take, so that means this is also 2y plus 10. We're going to slowly look at this triangle right here. We're going to take our 2y plus 10 plus that 6y plus that 90 degrees from the perpendicular, all equal to the sum of 180. I'm about to pause it. Please solve this problem on your own. And then resume, and the answer will be popping up very, very shortly. And what being, there it is. There's your work. Combine like terms, root of the 100, divide by 8, and we get 10. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at our squares. Next page, taking a look at the squares. Squares are going to be very, very interesting here, okay? Squares are going to have all the properties of the parallelogram, rectangle, and rhombus. So we're basically taking the rectangle and the rhombus and we're putting all the properties together. All the properties we have talked about so far are all going to be with your square, okay? So we don't have all the squares to, um, to draw all your labels with. We just know that we're going to have everything we have talked about so far, 
All right, and on our flow chart, we've talked about opposite sides being parallel and congruent. Opposite angles are congruent. The diagonals bisect each other. Consecutive angles are supplementary. We've got that we have four right angles. Our diagonals are congruent. We can go ahead and fill this guy out too right now if we want to. We've got that our um, rhombus here. We have all the properties of the parallelogram. All sides are congruent. The diagonals are now perpendicular as well. And the diagonals bisect opposite angles. So everything that we talked about, all the parallelogram properties, the two new on the rectangle and these new, the three new on the rhombus, all of these are going to flow back together. So we're saying we go down here and now we're bringing it all back together. So a square, if you follow the arrows backwards, a square is a rhombus and a parallelogram and a quadrilateral. A square is also a rectangle. Okay? So this is where that term comes from. A square is a rectangle because it has all of the rectangle's properties, but a rectangle is not a square because it's missing some of the rhombus properties. Okay? We'll just go ahead and fill out the square while we're here. We're going to have all of the properties of a parallelogram. Rectangle and rhombus. All right, pause it if you need to to get caught up. And let's bring back that square worksheet. Got a few problems to work out here. All right, quadrilateral math, M-A-T-H, is a square. So we're going to find all of these different properties here. First things first, if M-A, so right here, is going to be 8, we want to find AT. AT is right here. Well, the property here is all sides are congruent on the square. We should know that. So if all sides are congruent, that means AT is also going to be 8. Next, we're talking about um, we want the measurement of angle HST. So H to S to T, the center angle, just like the rhombus. The diagonals are perpendicular, so we will have a 90 degree angle. So the diags are perpendicular. So that means this is going to equal 90 degrees. The next question is at saying if HS, so from H to S right here, it's right here, is 2. We want to know what HA is. There's HA, okay? So again, this is going back to our diagonals are bisected. And this is that part plus particles hole that we did on the rhombus problem right here. Okay, exact same thing. We want the entire diagonal. They gave us half. We want the whole thing. So we just add them together and we get four. The last one here is talking about MT. MT is right here. And this is another rhombus property where our diagonals are congruent. So if HA is 4, then MT is also 4. Number 2, if MH, so right here, is 8, we want to find the length of A. So MH is 8. We want to find the length of AH right here. So what we need to do is remember a couple different things. Um, one of the properties of a rectangle that comes back over to the property of a square is our right angle. So here we have a 90 degree angle right here. We also know um, so we have uh, four right angles. And we have four congruent sides. This helps us because we know here if MH is 8, then MA is also 8. And guess what? We have a right triangle right here. And later we'll learn another way to solve this, but we'll just go flat out with Pythagorean theorem here. So we'll go ahead and use Pythagorean theorem. All this is is I'll show you representation of that 
away from it. Okay, here's that M, here's A, and here's H down at the bottom. These two sides are congruent, giving us 8 and 8. Just showing you what we're looking at, half of that. All right. So we're going to use Pythagorean theorem, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. A and B are both 8. So your job is to square the two 8s, add them together, and then square root. I'm going to pause it and allow you to do that. The answer is... Okay, with this problem, we did come up with a decimal. So I just rounded the nearest tenth. That's what I like to do. So you should have gotten approximately 11.3. Number three over here, we're saying it's the measurement of B to A to C down here. And I want my pictures all looking weird. From B, A, C right here, this angle is going to be 5X. We want to find X. So, we remember a couple things here. Number one, all four angles are 90 degrees. We have four right angles. Start there. Four right angles. So, we have 90 degree angle here. We also need to remember that that was with our rectangle property. With our rhombus property, those diagonals bisect that angle. So, diags bisect angles, therefore the measurement of angle BAC, what we're looking for here, okay, is going to be 45 degrees because it cuts it in half. So all we have to do is set 5x equal to 45. So 5x equals to 45, this one I won't worry about pausing or even using a different color. We divide by 5, and we can see here that x is going to equal 9. Last one. We are looking at the measurement of angle A, E, D. So from A to E to D right here is 5x plus 5. So that's this angle. Well, with our rhombus, which transfers to our square, we're going to have by, uh, diagonals that, that are perpendicular, sorry. There. So we have diags are perpendicular, meaning we're going to set this 5x plus 5 equal to 90. Please pause it, solve it. The answer is about to pop up. All right, we should have come out with 17. Check your work. And that is it for your rhombus and your square properties.